If you're looking for a journal that can help you improve your focus, maximize your potential, and achieve your goals, well, at least that's what this journal promises. Keep watching. If you're new here, hey, I'm Lauren, and on here I talk all things planning and self-care. Today I'm going to be reviewing for you this July issue of Silk and Sonder. I don't know, I'm kind of a little disappointed. <sighs> a little disappointed, a little underwhelmed. Silk and Sonder is a monthly journal subscription that comprises of receiving a journal each month, plus access to their mobile app and members only community Sonder Club. The app is designed to help you go deeper into your self care. And according to their website, Silk and Sonder combines cognitive behavioral and narrative therapy, positive psychology, and bullet journaling to help you reduce stress and anxiety. Those honestly sound like really, really big promises. When I placed my order, I received a few emails. One included a download link to this printable, which I have here. Another was inviting me to sign up to attend an upcoming Sonder Social, which is a weekly setup event. And I also remember opening up a video from like for a monthly setup, but I can't remember how I got to that. I'm guessing that I got an email, but I'm not sure. I've downloaded the app on my phone, but haven't really looked around in it except to set it up. Honestly, I'm a bit overwhelmed with all the things that were thrown at me before my journal even arrived. I only purchased this because they were offering it for $5. And I've been wanting to review this journal on my channel for a while, so I scooped it up to share. Which, full price, their monthly subscription is $24.95 per month, but you can get a discount if you sign up for quarterly or annual subscription plan. I would recommend, because this is what I did, to just sign up to their email list so that you can get notified when they have sales, which I can't remember how long I've been getting their emails now. It's been several months. It seems like they're always offering some kind of a discount. So do that if you watch this and you think you'd like to try this journal out in the future. So let's jump into the printable first since that's something that I got before the journal even got here. And I kind of want to walk you through a little bit of the experience of what to expect. So I did get the link. I download, I printed it out and I printed it just on full um, eight and a half by 11 letter size paper. So this page, it says my commitment to myself. This is your space to discover your why behind your self-care journey. And then ask you to list like who's going to keep you accountable during this journey. What would your ideal day with Silk and Sandra look like? Why would, wait, why did you join? What are you hoping to achieve? When will you do it? Like if you're going to do it in the morning, evening or night, where will you do your journal? How long are you going to practice? Now, I find this interesting that they give like different time options here. Because on their website, they advertise this journal as something that you can do like five minutes a day. And I really hate it when like anybody says you can just journal for five minutes a day because I honestly never journal for only five minutes. My journaling is always like longer than that. I, I mean, like I am thinking for at least five minutes before I write stuff down. So I don't know if it's just because that's just how I am and I just think deeper than other people. But I just really don't like it when things are advertised as, oh, you can just do this for five minutes. But anyway, I think that to get the full benefit of all the stuff that's in here, you probably are going to need more than five minutes a day to dedicate to this practice. And then the last box is for how do you want to feel after your first month? So this is just things to journal about before you even get it. And then it came with an example habit tracker and then a blank one so that you can kind of see how you potentially could use this. And it gave like some examples of some habits that you might, I mean, be interested in, but it doesn't really matter, just any habit. And I really do not think that you should just gung-ho start with trying to do seven new habits that you've never done before, like right away. If you're trying to develop some healthy habits that you haven't done before, I would honestly suggest one new thing at a time and then just every month add something different. Um, in addition to what you were doing the month before and just let it like add a new one each month and then continue with the previous ones. And, and eventually after about six months, you're doing six new habits. So I, I sort of wish that maybe that might have been some information included in here since supposedly 
this journal is science-based. I don't know. I feel like that information on habits should have been listed in here. Maybe it's in here. We'll have to see. So here's some, there's two different examples here on how you could use the week. So the week looks like this, like the setup is kind of like that. And so I gave you an example of how you potentially could use it. So this is one way of doing it where you're sort of scheduling out your day. And then over here, they had it broken down in something that I probably would rather do is breaking things down into like sections. So they did like a morning routine at the top some top to do's and then an appointment section. And then at the bottom, they just used it really for whatever, like over here, they use it for some wins, some affirmations, and then like a brain dump section. And this was a way that people were using it for an actual like planner to map out your day, sort of like time blocking. So those are some examples. And then it gave me like a full week spread so that I could play around with this which you obviously see i didn't so you see how saturday and sunday are stacked that's how the layout is in the journal over here and then it had you know just a page to join the saunder club i wish that they would have offered like a, a free printable section where they would just give you the week so that you can kind of play around in that since that's not really the meat of what the journal is the week spread um alone I see that as being a really good freebie offer unless I just don't remember that when I signed up to their emails, maybe there was some kind of freebie when I first signed up and I just don't remember. So I don't know, maybe there is that, but if you just go to their website and look around, there's no mention of any kind of freebies that you could get. Then the journal. And let me show you, let me get a ruler because this journal is a lot smaller than I originally thought it would be. So the size of this journal is a seven by like eight and a half. And then it's really, really thin. So like, like not even a centimeter. It's like a half a centimeter. So it's a very, very thin journal and you get this every month. I don't know. I kind of wish maybe they would, maybe they would do instead of every month, they would offer like a three month and it would be one book for three months because this easily times three wouldn't be that big of a journal. I, I don't know. I just maybe think that that's how it should be instead of like every month. But it did come packaged in this like bubble envelope, came through the post office. And the journal, I see it says made in California and it's the July. So each month there's a different theme. So the month for July is acceptance. And I believe if you're watching this in real time, if you're watching this in July, I mean, in June or maybe in early July, you should be able to pick up this exact journal unless they sold out. So the journal first starts off with an index page, which gives you a breakdown of what to expect. So there's going to be an editor's note, some definitions, an annual log, a monthly overview, a future log, a wheel of life, monthly reflection, monthly intentions, mood tracker, habit tracker, sleep tracker, gratitude log acceptance prompts, something called break up with perfect, perfect reference letter, coloring page, vision board, recipe affirmations, how many squares and expense tracker. And then down the very end is where the weeks are. So there's like all of these pages in the front and then the weeks are not until the back. And there's some kind of mid month check-in that you do. And since July is basically a month that has like five weeks. So, cause it, they would consider it starting June 26th. You've got five weeks in here to carry over for the entire month. Here's the letter from the founder. Her name is Mia. I believe that's how you pronounce that. M-E-H-A. She's the founder. I'm pretty sure this is going to be different every month because their theme varies every month. So I would assume that the letter is going to reflect the acceptance theme. And then over here, there's a definition of what acceptance means. So there's a monthly calendar or like a year calendar here. And then you have the month, which you would have to turn the planner this way. This is how they have it oriented. And it's a Monday start as well, which I don't like Monday starts. I prefer the calendar here to be a Sunday just because that's how my brain works. And it has a couple of things noted, like how it's World Chocolate Day on the 7th. And the 16th is National Ice Cream Day. 
I find it funny that those two things are listed in a journal that's supposed to help you focus on self-care. Future log. So this is what the future log page is so that you can plan in the future as things come up. So if you're starting to make appointments, you only have like two months in advance that you can plan out for when it comes to like the future log pages in here. It would be interesting to know if anybody actually uses this journal as like an actual planner as well because I don't know how I feel about like having to get a new one every month and like copying over the information. I don't know. That just seems like a lot. I feel like this needs to just stay just a journal. Wheel of Life. This is very common in a lot of goal-related type planners. This one has 10 different areas of life. So they break it down into education, financial, health, career, family, spiritual relationships, romance, home environment, and adventure. For you to like kind of rank how you feel like you are doing in each of those areas of life, it doesn't give you any other guidance here. It's just whatever number you think. Then you jump into some June reflections pages and your July intentions pages. So obviously the June reflections is so I'm assuming there isn't a July reflections page in this book and I'd have to wait until I get the next one to reflect in that one. We'll have to see. So June wins, June challenges, favorite moments. What do I want to start, stop, and continue? And then the intention. So you can set an intention in each of these areas. Your spiritual health, personal life, physical health, key relationships, money management, and professional goals. I find it interesting that they're not using these categories over here under like intentions unless there's somewhere else in because this to me feels like goals like where you would have goals set in each of these areas and then it's not really aligning with what these are listed as so obviously money management is financial physical health would have to do with it's the same as like regular health in this side um key relationships would probably be like family and relationship and probably romance all in one personal life isn't even like a category here so i'm not sure what and spiritual is a category here professional goals would be kind of like career so there isn't even like a home category here but it's not it says it's not about making a to-do list so this is not meant for you to like make a to-do list it's just for you to just set an intention then here's a mood tracker. The flowers in here are very pretty, actually. It's almost like a watercolor like. So it gives a section, an area for you to pick six different moods and you can color code them. And then every day you come to this page. So, every, so I think this is just going to be all the trackers. So if you're going to use this journal every day, you got to remember to come here. You got to come here to do your habit tracker. Here's a sleep tracker if you want to keep track of that. Here's a gratitude log. So every day you can write what you're grateful for. Here's some acceptance prompts, and this one says break up with perfect. So let's see what this is about. This is in a world that constantly pressures you to be perfect, the only acceptance we need is our own. Take a deep breath and reflect on the prompts below. When do you feel the most confident about yourself? Who are you with? Where are you? What's one compliment you wish you would get? Now give it to yourself. How does that make you feel? Okay. What do you think your inner perfectionist is afraid of? How can you respond to your inner perfectionist expectations? Okay, a reference letter. Take a moment to reflect on all the things that make you you, then write yourself a reference letter. Acceptance, some kind of quote, a coloring page, a vision board section, it's a recipe for some kind of pesto, some affirmations, so shapes, and you're supposed to fill in some affirmations in there. Blank, actually not blank, it's like grid boxes some kind of puzzle and it shows you the previous month's answer key. So I guess in the next month you'll get the answer key for this. A monthly expense tracker and then we finally see some week pages. So here this is week 26 so it highlights what week this is on the little month calendar view there. This is kind of like a month a weekly dashboard page and I guess this too so this all is like for the week up ahead. I this week I want to feel weekly major Weekly major three goals. That's worded weird. So your habit trackers for the week, which, okay, do you go to here for your habit trackers or you go to the page in the front for your habit trackers? I guess you could do either. I, I don't know. Or you can do different habits that you're tracking here versus the habits you're tracking over there. I don't know. 
You could do both, like the exact same ones. A quote, mind, body, health plan. I could see me using this to j jot down what my yoga schedule is for the week if I'm following a calendar. Shopping list section, I'm loving, and then your meal plan for the week. And then here's your week view. So it goes Monday through Friday. And then hold on, it's not the same as what the printable was. Now this has like a scratch pad section. And then your Saturday and Sunday are over here. And then you have a weekly reflection section here with things that say rose, bud, and thorn. I have no idea what that means. Oh, it says a highlight, an emerging opportunity, and a challenge. And then a, another grid section here. And then it jumps into the next week. So then you've got those weeks. And then here's the mid. This is probably like the mid week, mid month. This must be the mid month check in. So you have a quote here. And then you've got this mid month check in. Things that you're currently loving, feeling, enjoying, anticipating, wishing, reading, watching, and planning. And then another week. And another week. And one more week. Yeah, one more week. And then at the end, they do give you the 31st. So that's good. And then you have notes, which is lined. And then some grid paper. Grid paper. And then that's the end of it. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this in my July planner stack or not. It is a dated product. I want to say that I would, but I'd need to really think about this if I want to use this as my journal. This, I have been journaling every day, but this style of, this is not exactly the style of journaling that I've been doing. This is very open-ended every single day, and I've got like this amount of space to write in like my thoughts about the day. So I really see myself, I would only use these pages right here. And I really don't see myself using the week views or anything else like that in here. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if I want to use this or not. But going back to what the website says about how this journal is supposed to help you improve your focus and maximize your potential and achieve your goals, like... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know if that's what I see out of this issue. I don't know if combined with using the app, which again, like I said, it was just kind of overwhelming to look at everything. I in general kind of stay away from social media with the exception of Instagram because Instagram, I feel like is very easy. Facebook feels really overwhelming. The app seemed a little bit like overwhelming with like where to go, point me where to start. And it's prompting me like notifications every single day, which I think I need to turn off. I don't usually keep notifications turned on for things. I don't know. It just, that seems like it might add more to me than um, what I need right now. So I don't know if I'm the right person for this journal at this stage of my life. I'm trying to think if this journal would even be something that I would have enjoyed um, when I was like really stressed out and maybe I don't know I still don't know that that would if this journal is something that I would have leaned if I would have felt like would have made it's just difficult to say the paper is kind of um, off white it's not quite white so here's my, my regular computer paper if you notice it's like the paper is a little bit ivory and this is a gold yeah it's pretty and I like the concept of this and the monthly subscription, I feel like the monthly subscription is more paying for the community aspect of it and the app and like whatever things and exercises and also like every week if you wanted to sit down with whoever does the, you know, weekly setup videos, that those are great additional things. But I feel like all that stuff together feels overwhelming, just like right from the beginning as somebody who would be brand new to this. So what I would do if I were wanting to try this journal is I would just lean into whatever it is that you feel like you need and ignore everything else. Because I think that's the case with all planners is that when you get a planner, you should lean into all the parts of it that work and are things that you're going to actually use 
and not feel pressured to use it if it's it just doesn't it's not relevant to you so yeah i think with this journal it might be good for some and i know there's a community of people who really love this journal and the community i guess that um goes along with it with the app but i don't see myself wanting to subscribe to this at this point i don't really even see very many what is it what was it that they said cognitive behavioral therapy cbt like the prompts hey the prompts that are in the beginning maybe the the way the wording of the prompts are they're more like what a therapist might ask but other than this page i don't see very much and maybe the wheel of life is something that's pulled from therapy i'm not even sure i don't know let me know your thoughts on this this obviously is not meant to replace therapy although the the story of the founder explained how she wanted to create a product because I think therapy was not accessible to her and she wanted to create something for people who don't really have access to therapy, but to give them some kind of a tool that is sort of based on science and what therapy practices, I don't know. So I don't know. I'm kind of a little disappointed, <sighs> a little disappointed, a little underwhelmed. I didn't even do a pen test in here. Let's do a pen test. Let me write on this page. Let's see. This is a really juicy pen. I'm kind of a little bit there, but that's because I just finished writing in it. The paper seems to write good. There's no skipping or anything with this pen. So I think the paper is good. So I don't think you're going to have any, you know, issues with writing in here and getting annoyed if anything skips yeah let me know if this video has helped you to decide to get it or to not get it and leave a comment if you've purchased this before and how that experience was for you maybe maybe it's just the theme that you got that month maybe that just didn't resonate with you and your self-care journey i'm really curious to know like how many people are using this journal like all the time and especially if people are using this as their like main planner. These weekly pages definitely give off like just planner vibes as just being a planner. I think it would be interesting if they came out with just a planner that didn't have all the journal, all the other journaling things with it. And then maybe they created a journal that had just the journal parts and not the weeks in there instead of like combining the two. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Those are my thoughts on the Silk and Sonder. If this video was helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more planning and self-care related videos, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.